Hi folks, we're looking at um, this topic. Corinius. Uh, Let's see. Here. The second problem that he raises, and it is a good historical problem to raise, is the issue of Corinius's census. Um, Corinius is a governor who's associated with the changeover from Archelaus being removed as uh, as the ruler of Judea to the appointment of a Roman prefect to take over that responsibility. Corinius, in the case of, uh, of the time of uh, AD 6, and uh, this is a role similar to the one Pilate had later. The, and the argument goes like this. Corinius, we know, was, was ruler in AD 6. That's too late to represent Jesus' birth and be the explanation for why Mary and Joseph have come south from uh, Nazareth down into Judea, into Bethlehem. And that is certainly correct. Josephus doesn't give us any indication of an earlier census or anything like that, so we do have a historical anomaly here at this point uh, that is much discussed. Now, we know that when Luke refers to the idea of there being a census being taken in all the world from Augustus, that actually what Augustus did is he didn't he didn't institute a uh, empire-wide census, but he, he instituted a variety of censuses in specific locations moving from place to place as he gradually took the census of the empire. We know that as well. My own understanding of this passage, and it's not the normal solution that's taken. Oftentimes the way people solve this is to do it syntactically and to say that Luke is saying before Corinthians' census in A.D. 6, uh, this move was made and this registration was made. That's possible, but it seems perhaps a little uh, a little odd uh, in terms of the way um, the wording of the text is. Uh, my own solution is to say this way, that Augustus got organized to take this census. This census took place somewhere between 6 and 4 B.C., or at least the beginning mechanizations of it, but it wasn't actually executed until we got to Quirinius. In other words, he's the one who took the data, put it together, presented it for Rome, and Rome actually began to make use of it for taxation under Quirinius. So this is a long process. I like to make the analogy of uh, when they build a major freeway in a city. That was uh, on the uh, bot. Uh Bart Ehrman project, okay. Uh, Daryl Book, just get that a minute. That was Daryl Bock on Bart Ehrman project, and now this is David Wayneham. Corinthians question. shepherds, the angels in the sky, and so on. Are these, are these reliable history? There are, there are particular problems. There's the Quirinius issue. Matthew and Luke say that Jesus was born, they both say, that Jesus was born in the days of Herod the Great. <coughs> and the general consensus among scholars is that Herod the Great died in 4 B.C. So that Jesus was actually born around 4 BC, at the end of Herod's life. The fact that uh, later calendars got the date slightly wrong doesn't matter. Uh, Jesus born during the days of Herod the Great. But Luke tells us, Luke chapter 2, verse 1, speaks of the Holy Family going back to Bethlehem because of the registration that was taking place at that time and Luke 2, verse 1 says, this first registration took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria. There's a problem. The evidence is, and I think it's quite good evidence, that Quirinius was governor of Syria, and that includes the area of Syria, included what uh, we might call Palestine or modern Israel. Quirinius, governor of Syria, that he was governor and he held his census in AD 6. Historical problem? Ten, ten years out? 
Was Jesus born in the days of Herod the king, or was he born at the time of Quirinius's governorship? On the basis of that evidence, that clash, if you like, that historical problem, scholars have concluded, have concluded that Luke was historically confused and actually mistaken over the dates. So scholars have suggested Luke is understandably getting rather confused over these things. And it's been suggested that actually what happened was that uh, Luke knew about Jesus being born during the days of Herod the king, but thought now Jesus comes from Nazareth, but he has to be born in Bethlehem because he's a king in the line of David. How can we explain that? Oh, it must be something to do. Okay, that's a scholar, um, David Wayne, and um, then you heard an evangelical scholar. So. Um, You've got to be careful what historians say. Um, it's, historians can be very dogmatic at times when they shouldn't be as dogmatic. And they can say things without actually doing the formidable research that's actually required uh, to be dogmatic. And dogmatism on this issue is surely not required because there's a lot of data that actually uh, goes on the side of Luke as against him. That's something that scholars don't naturally present. So what kind of scholarship can we present? Uh, first of all, I just want to say there are some wishy-washy evangelical scholars who try to come up with answers. Um, I, I like Daryl Bock, but I think it's wishy-washy that he's saying. And there are these scholars uh, that will come up and say, well, the Gospel of Luke's wrong on this. First point I want to say is if you look at the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, and you look at Luke as a writer, time and time again, there's at least 84 historical facts, minute facts, that Luke gets right concerning his times in the Book of Acts. If you look at Luke uh, chapter 2, chapter 3, Luke mentions many historical details, and he's very, very clearly wanting to demarcate the birth of Christ in a particular particular historical time frame and if he's going to do that he will have to be sure of his sources and I believe that he, he was sure of his sources so what is the evidence for Luke well we don't actually know who the governor was at the time when Luke says Quirinius uh, took the census which is he Luke's referring to a, a later census not the 6 AD but the four or earlier BC census of Quirinius. Um, we don't know who the governor was. Uh, it's stated that there was a governor at that time, but there's debate about that. There was often um, two governors, and it's very possible that Quirinius could have been a governor uh, at that time. Now it is argued that he was involved in military operations about that time uh, in other parts of the country but it wasn't far away, it wasn't too far away for him to come uh, to the area that Luke is referring to to be the governor on a number of, for a number of reasons. Number one, Quirinius was a military hero. If there was any military difficulty or military problem uh, he would have been sent to that region. And guess what? We do find that there are coins minted about that time for Quirinius being a ruler in that area. Okay? So that's another piece of evidence on the side of Luke. But we also know that at the time of Herod's death, there was political upheaval. Uh, there was a lot of instability. So it's highly likely that Augustus would have sent Quirinius to that area. Also if there was any taxing going on that would have been very political and very dangerous indeed and so they would have wanted someone who was a military expert. So just on a few fronts there Quirinius is a good um, a good person to to actually uh, send in that area. The other thing is Augustus had family connections in that area 
and he also um, it was also a very important military place and he wanted in the end of his reign to make sure that he had control of the military and so he would make sure that there were certain types of people that he would empower that would actually be in control of the military situation and again one of the people that he promoted was Quirinius and so therefore it's highly likely that he was actually the governor of that area and that he was actually involved in taxation and he purely because of those many reasons the political instability because of Herod the fact that he was a national war hero the fact that um, Augustus had um, family connections in that area um, and would have been interested to make sure that it was someone who we could trust who could be uh, a leader in that area um, and many other reasons uh, so putting all these pieces together there is strong uh, circumstantial evidence to suggest that Luke is actually correct and the dogmatism that modern scholars are saying about the incorrectness of Luke and the wishy-washy apologetics of some of the evangelical scholars uh, needs to be revised in a much more thorough scholarship that has been actually done at the present time.